Hi again. We had stopped at the last increment on the words highlighted in black, which means a mind having wisdom. That covers 538 to 544 AD, and these will be, as far as Justinian has experienced so far, the worst years of his life. Okay? He doesn't know that yet. He's busy priding himself on how he built this church by 537. It will be here. Yeah. Not Bible doctrine, though. A building with a lot of gold and silver that wasn't really built all that well. Because 20 years later, it's going to come down. And, of course, it's held by the Muslims now. Aha. So God didn't hold a very high opinion of that building. But at this point, he doesn't know that. And at this point, he's just finished flush because now Belisarius is in Italy. And right here at the end of whole day here, when Belisarius is here in Italy, he's just conquered Rome. And he's all proud of himself too. And so you can see why our boy Justinian's all full of himself by 537 because as far as he's concerned he's conquered Rome it's really Western Italy they still have problems in the north they haven't gotten to yet he's conquered southern southwestern Italy or mostly Western Italy where Rome is and he's conquered Africa it wasn't really him it was Belisarius okay and he is spending money like he can't believe and of course that money's got to come from somewhere and it's coming from the people who are already so crushed that they rebelled against him here so they ain't too happy and sure he's poured some of that money into the building of the temple which aided the local economy to a certain extent plus he's building other buildings during the same five years okay but he doesn't understand and he's going to now understand that he kind of went too far. He spent, he, he, he crushed the people, all right? And then he went into this big Africa war, and he can say, well, because it's a breadbasket, that's going to help the people. And people will try to trust their leaders. They want him. We all want to believe that our leaders are virtuous. And he's building this fantastic temple to God. And he's having success in Italy, so see, God is on his side. Yeah, until you get to 538. And then everything, noose, mind, is what the word means in Greek. Now everything starts to kind of go in hell in the handbasket. First of all, i got to back up a little bit. This was 527, and this takes you to 532. What I didn't tell you is during those same years, now highlighted in black, taking you just before the Nika revolt. There was also a problem in the east with the Persians because the Persians were fighting off and on here ever since 518. They were on, they were off, they were on, they were off, and there was a little bit of a peace. And then they didn't like the kind of deal that they got. So starting in 527, of course, because we got a new ruler, they decide they want to start fighting again. And so they're fighting. And they stop here. Now, in Persian fighting, it was it was like city by city. And they were fighting over who would have a right to the taxes. So it wasn't like a constant standing deal. You'd fight, usually in the summer, every summer. And then you'd stop. Okay? So it was off again, on again during that time. But he was already spending money on that, too. See, that's what I want you to understand. He's spending money. He's taking in money. He's crushing in the people to fight. And he didn't have to do that. But he's full of this glory, you know, restoring the beast that was. Okay? And Trajan, of course, had, had reached the empire that far, and he wanted to be another Trajan, really another Constantine. And so, you know, by this time, he stopped 
with the Persians, so he's thinking, okay, I, I, I beat the Persians. I got, not necessarily beat them, but stand off. I've got the Nika revolt handled. I've got my wonderful general, my para, you know, now going into Africa and taking Africa. Okay. And now he's in Italy and, oh, he just took Rome. And now I just finished building this church. God must be smiling on me. Well, of course, God isn't. So our boy, Belisarius, he starts to have some problems in 538. Well, no wonder. The Goths were, the way the Goths fought, they came, they took, they left. All right? So it would be real easy to take Rome, but how long do you hold it? That's always a problem in war. Yeah, you can take a city, but holding it's a whole other ballgame. First of all, you got people who are likely hostile to the fact that you took it over, although in this case, maybe they weren't. But the enemy, if it scatters, and this was the problem we had in Vietnam, too, the minute you start going home, which is what he starts to do here, starts moving away to the next place in Italy where he wants to take over, well then, guess what? The mind of those you took over changes. And that's exactly what starts happening here. Not only that, but you know, our boy, our boy Belisarius, well, he's real important now. Okay, he took over Africa. He took over Italy. Well, it didn't really take over all Italy, okay, but a lot of it. You know, the emotional part. So the mind kind of goes to mush at home. Oh, we're so victorious. We have this new church. We have all these new buildings that the emperor has built, which it wasn't him, but they credited it to him. So they're all real full of themselves. So they don't notice that the mind, that's the Greek word for mind, is changing in other areas. Now we're talking about it's no longer, you know, inside Constantinople because at this moment they're a little bit awed by all these victories and the new church and other buildings that were so splendid but the mind of the Persians on the east and the Africans on the west and especially the Goths over in Italy which is kind of southwest of where Constantinople is not to mention the people in the Middle East who are sick to death of being taxed. So they're going to be kind of amenable to the Persians. The minds are changing. Not only that, but there's this like, I'm not so sure I trust this guy Belisarius because now he's more popular than me. Kind of like Donald Trump. Okay. So the minds are all beginning to think differently about what's just happened. Not necessarily inside Constantinople, but outside it. Plus, Justinian's mind is beginning to get a little bit jealous. Okay? So he sends another guy to sort of, like, help Belisarius. It's a put-down. So Belisarius' mind is changing, too. He's not so happy. Meanwhile, that takes us to 539, really. Having, oh, this is such a killer. Echon. All right, this is 535, 36, 37, church is built, and Rome is taken over for a little while. Mines are changing in 538. 539, the conflict goes kind of full blown between uh, Belisarius and the guy Justinian sent in to help him, okay, which is kind of a snub. Okay, now we enter into 540 and 541. Now, when you have minds that are changing and all this misspent money, and now you're at night, 540 and 541, well, the minds that were changing starting back here are in Persia and Africa. And so Persia starts up again. Now that would be a really stupid move on their part given what happens the following year. 
in the following year, 541, at Ohm. No, the whole word is having. Okay? At the last part of having. God is so witty. But this is biting. This is truly biting. In the south of the Africa part that he just had conquered, somebody was really sick. I mean, really sick. And that somebody was not only really sick, but contagious. And the kind of sickness and contagious it was is what we will later call in the 14th century the Black Death, bubonic plague. Started up right around the area that Belisarius had just conquered. And it spreads because, you know, after all, there's all this new trade now and all these people moving back and forth and all these troops going home and they're bringing the trade with them and they're bringing the plague with them. And it comes up through the south and the northern part of Africa, up through the Middle East, in Palestine, all that area that the Persians are just thinking they want to go into, okay? <laughs> the plague is starting to spread. Now, that's pretty still far south of Constantinople. I want you to get this. So that's 541 when the plague is starting, and the Persians are starting to rattle their sabers on the east again. And remind, remember, they've got all these taxes that are still being levied, okay? And they aren't doing too well in their crops either. 542, it creeps up northward. And it starts getting into Italy that they just conquered. And the Ostrogoths are now back and back rattling their sabers too. And when we get to the fee, remember I said file? Very beginning. Fialas, vile, in English, V-I-A-L. Wow, see, we got a fee going on here, okay? We got a really bad fee going on here. In the middle of Sophia, wisdom, which he doesn't have, so since he doesn't have it, into Constantinople itself, this plague goes, 543 A.D., and it came due to him conquering Africa up here. It came due to all the trade and the movement that came after that. It came due to everybody rattling their sabers. And now the Goths are moving down into the area that has already been hit with the plague. Because it started hitting Italy at the same, it started hitting, hitting Italy about the year before maybe right here, 542, but it hits Constantinople right here. Now, notice the wit. He builds a temp, uh, supposedly the grand, one of the most grand buildings of the world that people praise even until today, St. Sophia, Hagia Sophia, they call it. And in the middle of the word Sophia, that's when they get hit with the plague. Fee. File. You get that? See, it's even FIA. And it stays there. It's going to come back 15 years later, too. It doesn't just go away once. Okay? Justinian himself is hit with the plague. So, here, the mind having wisdom, he didn't have any, so he gets the plague instead in lieu of wisdom and sometime around in here on top of that his wife who he supposedly loved I mean did, from what we can tell it was a real love story of some kind they were certainly fixated on each other his wife starts to get cancer she doesn't die of it yet but she starts to get it cancer takes a long time to kill you okay and you almost don't notice it until it's too late most of the time. So she's sick with, starting to get sick with cancer, but it doesn't look like the plague hit her, but it hit him. And once he recovers, first of all, he's all scarred. That's one thing that happens to him. 
Um, but the other thing is his mind just goes. And that was one of the characteristics of the plague is that it hit different people different ways. Some people, they didn't have any overt symptoms, but they were crazy. Okay. Other people, they would have overt symptoms. And usually most of the people who got it died within a few days. Bubonic plague. Can, the same thing happened in the Middle East. I mean, in uh, Europe. It killed probably one-fourth, one-half of the people. Now, somewhere in here also, there is another, there's an earthquake. I mean, there's another one coming up in 551, but somewhere in here there's an earthquake. Now, why am I bringing all that up? This guy is the poster boy for the Antichrist. What does it say that happens? During the tribulation, you got all these, as it were, signs, earthquakes, disease, pestilence, hail, bad weather, okay? And in the actual tribulation, it's going to mimic the exodus, the, the ten plagues of the exodus. But anything that's evocative of that should have made everybody wake up. And indeed, while people are sick right here in Constantinople, they suddenly get real religious until their symptoms subside or they die. And then they go back to being whatever they were. It doesn't dawn on them to look at scripture. And the very words you're looking at are words that were native to them. Okay? They should have been able to count syllables without even thinking because Greek in particular is a language that prides itself on its syllabification. So how come they didn't know this? How come a stupid brain out, you know, 2,000 years later can see it so readily? I mean, I haven't had to do much study on this. All I do is I see the numbers, I look it up, and it's, you know, it's not hard. Here's the timeline. You want to see it yourself? It's not hard. Okay. That's one. Here's another one. And you can go all just way up the top. And here you go. Here's the timeline. Look at that. And then you match it to the syllables. All right. See? Sassanid Empire, that's another name for Persian. Here's North Africa. I already covered that. First phase of the war in Italy. And it was, it was, it, what, you have to read the actual link text. But in the middle, there's a sort of hiatus, okay, and then, it's, then it starts up again, and then it quits again for a little while. Meanwhile, in the very same year, see, back to the Persians again, and then basically one year of rest and you're back to Italy fighting again. All right? So every victory he wins, he doesn't keep. And he spent oodles of money. Because Anastasia has left the treasury with like 320,000 pounds of gold. Which is like enough to make you last for years. Your whole country could have lasted for years on that. He spent it all on these stinking campaigns. And I'm building this church that people can't get into because it's got too much wealth inside it. So how are you learning God that way and how is that a glory to God? The only glory to God is what you take with you, and the only thing you're going to take with you is your soul. So get the doctrine in your soul. That's true wealth. How come he didn't know that? I mean, we all figured that out by the time you get to the end of your life. It's like, gee, I spent all my life on all these lunches and dinners and doodads and goo guys and clothing and yada yada and all this empty conversation. Here I am at the end of my life, and what was it worth to me? Nothing. But Bible doctrine just gets richer as it ages in your head. I have zero regrets for having spent so much time on this. How come he didn't know that? If he was such a great guy. Because he was supposed to be really, really smart. Well, apparently not. His news, his mind was mush. And so he ended up having a different kind of wisdom. The wisdom of a disease gripping him, which he survives. Okay? But he's never the same again. Now, what's really heartbreaking about this whole thing, and we're only at 544, okay? 
I have, he's got another 20 years left he's got to live. 25. Okay? The heartbreaking thing of this was is that this guy was not um, himself. He was not... Um, he was not actually interested in gold, silver, precious stones. And I, I mean, he, he wasn't like a hedonist, all right? Po, um, as much as uh, Procopius hates this guy, at least in the middle of secret history, he says, you know, the guy was real abstemious. He, didn't, he hardly ate any food. Had a little oil, stuck some herbs in the oil and ate that. Well, that's not, that's an ascetic. He had an ascetic bent. He was constantly awake. He'd sleep maybe a couple hours, if that, one, two hours a night. So it's not like he was busy playing with his wealth. What he was trying to do, and this is the this is what's so so heartbreaking about an antichrist. He's the type of antichrist. He really believes in his cause. He really believed he was doing God's work. He's he. he Grabbed a lot of money because he thought, oh, I'm going to rebuild Rome. And already, by 537, as soon as he finishes that stupid church, the minds turn against him. Outside, whatever victory he's got is really tenuous. And oh, by the way, every place you conquer, they're going to be having the wisdom of plague. And they're going to bring it to you. Okay? And of course, during the same time when he's at his weakest and everybody's being, you know, broken, the Persians, oh boy, oh boy, they want to start fighting again. Okay? And they do. It's off and on, especially because of the plague. Because they, they realize, oh, these people are stricken by plague. I think, well, you know, we'll start a little bit fighting and then we see the plague and then we back off. It's on again, off again, on again, off again. But still, they don't give up. They don't completely stop. And, of course, the Italians, especially, they got ravaged, too. But as soon as the ravaging goes away, because it lasts like two months, six months, eight months, nine months, and you have 30,000, 50,000 dead. But people, you know, when they got their brains on wrong, that doesn't wake them up. And so they go back to fighting. Same thing happened in the Middle Ages. You know, the Black Death happened during the Hundred Years' War. Can you imagine? They have all these people dying. They don't even have enough to grow their crops. And yet they're going to go to war with each other. Over what? There's nobody to fight. See, this, this, it, it's like these people, and this is what Procopius was saying about Justine. It's like being possessed. It's like your, your noose, your mind having, well, it isn't, it isn't real wisdom, but you think it is. That's the position that Justinian is in by the time you get to 544, okay? Everything he fought for is now going away from him, including maybe his own life. Because, you know, one-third, one-half, one third, at least, of Constantinople is, is toast due to this disease. They die. But you've got all those people that were, you know, south of them and west of them and east of them that were part of their kingdom, and they're sick too. So by all that happiness that he had here in, in 534, we want Africa. Yeah, and it's from Africa the plague came and moved its way gradually east and north. So by 544, what do you have? Sisyphean victory is what you have. The Rome that you conquered, the Africa that you conquered, well, it's just, just piled up with dead. And your own town where you live, where you just finished rebuilding all those buildings, and now you're glorifying yourself about that temple, well, it's filled with dead people. Ten years. Ten years from here to here. And his own wife is somewhere she just started to have the cancer. She's going to die four years later. At I Hepta Kef.
she dies there. I have that cap. Yeah, forty. Well, not even five four. Yeah, four years later, she dies in five forty eight. So his head dies. She's his head. His head dies. But she starts getting sick here. She didn't. Uh, apparently, she didn't get the plague. But she got cancer instead. So this guy's life is no good. You're getting that, right? From a high in 534, only 10 years later, and everything he conquered is basically ruined. Because it's got that sickness and the disease that's, that's infecting it. Or he's, it's depopulated because of the disease. And he spent all that money to get what? A bunch of dead corpses laying everywhere in his realm. See the meaning of Sophia? You see why, how it got reversed. See how particular God is? He knows what church got the name of the church that would get built here. And he's playing on it. Different kind of wisdom, huh? You won't take the wisdom of Bible doctrine? Okay, how about the wisdom of a disease that's going to take over your people because they don't have any wisdom either? I'm going to stop there for now because I'm, I'm, I'm about ready to cry. I hate seeing this kind of thing happen to leaders.